Welcome to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum's Zoom series, Trolleyology. This is actually the first program in our spin-off series, Trolleyology, The Extra Board. My name is Kristen Fredrickson. I'm the Assistant Manager of Visitor Experience here at the Trolley Museum. Thank you so much for joining us for our first program of 2022. And welcome back to everybody who's been here before. This virtual series features programs on Pennsylvania transit history topics and stories of our collection that you can experience from your home. Typically, today we are branching out beyond the borders of the US for the first time to something that I think our members are really gonna find interesting. And we plan to continue these programs regularly. So if you have a show uh, that kind of aligns with our museum mission, please let me know. That'd be anything about Pennsylvania, the trolley era, or cities where our streetcars are from. And if you have a program that doesn't quite fit those guidelines, like today's Isle of Man program, please reach out anyway. And you can see the full list of upcoming programs at our website, patrolley.org. And I will share that in the chat in just a few minutes so that you can click on it. Um, we don't have any others to register for just yet, but those will be coming on shortly. And I wanna extend a special thank you to those who donated when registering for tonight's program and those who have made donations through our website. We made over $2,000 last year um, just from our trolleyology programs alone. And uh, these programs are free, so that's wonderful. Thank you guys so much. We truly appreciate your support of our virtual programs. So for those who might be new to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum, we were established in 1954 as the Art and Electric Railway by a group of trolley enthusiasts called the Pittsburgh Electric Railway Club. And the museum opened to visitors a few years later in 1963 and is actually located along the trolley line, um, former trolley line between Pittsburgh and Washington, PA. You'll find about 50 trolleys and electric railway cars here, about 20 of which operate, and about 30,000 visitors per year take the four mile scenic trip here at the museum. And now I would like to introduce today's presenter, Ian Longworth. He wrote an awesome biography, so I'm going to read it. Ian has been interested in transport as long as he can remember with holidays in his early years in Blackpool, England. He is a trustee of Bolton 66 tram car and was involved in its restoration of subsequent loan to Blackpool for a trial in 1981. It is still there today and was to be the first of many heritage cars to operate at Blackpool. He joined Greater Manchester Passenger Transport Executive in 1974 and was the traffic superintendent at Barry during the interchange project, coordinating bus and rail operations and a first step towards Metrolink for which it is the Northern Terminus. His career took him to the National Bus Company before joining Shearings where he was the managing director of what became the largest coach holiday operator in Europe. Here, his professional life met his hobby for the first time, arranging overseas trips, which reached 69 in total before COVID-19 caused a temporary halt. After a number of years in the private sector, his hobby and profession met again when in 2009, he was appointed to his current position on the Isle of Man. He always felt he was too young to be the general manager of a first generation tramway, but to also have that role in a horse tramway seemed impossible, but in short, that's now his day job. At the end of the presentation, we will have a question and answer session with our presenter, but the chat box will be open. So please feel free to answer, um, well, enter questions or answer questions that you know the answers to and um, type some comments in during the show and we can read through those at the end. And just a note, again, this program is being recorded and will be shared within the next few weeks on our YouTube channel. Uh, keep your microphones muted and we'll turn our videos off now during the presentation so that our presenter has all the bandwidth available and so we don't have any distractions on the screen. All right, Ian, take it away. Uh, good evening, everybody. We'll just um, share the screen. There we are. Okay, ready to go. Um, there's about just over 200 slides in an hour and a half, so I shan't be hanging you around, but just of all, we better put where the Isle of Man is into perspective for you. Um, a lot of people get us confused with the Isle of Wight, but we're actually situated between England and Ireland. And from the top of the Isle of Man, from the summit of Snaefell, um, you can see seven kingdoms, which is basically the Irish Republic, Northern Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, um, the Isle of Man and the Kingdom of Heaven. So that puts it in perspective where it is. 
um, but it's also a, a independent country. So whereas the uh, UK has recently left the European Union, we were never actually a member. So it's one of the oldest continuous parliaments that we have um, in the world. Um, and also um, we're the home of the TT races, which we're famous for, they're over 100 years old. And five to eight people kill themselves and about 43,000 come to watch each year uh, with on-street uh, motorbike racing. Um, there's a picture from an overflying aircraft, which puts it into perspective. At the top of the island, beyond there is Scotland. The calf at the bottom is um, not, not habited, uninhabited. Um, the, to the right, the spit of land here, uh, that's where the airport is. So you've got Port Erin and Port St Mary in the south, where the steam railway runs to the capital at Douglas. You've then got the Manx Lecture Railway, American Ninja Railway that runs up to Ramsey. Um, and um, the Snaefell runs up to here from Laxey here. Um, the other towns of Peel here on this side, which has a population of only 3,000. Total population is around 85,000. Um, so um, most of the things on the government, the, the place is known really for being a good source of money. However, balance against that, it's no longer trendy to hide your money somewhere here. Um, and the effect of that, so it's a very, um, a very right-wing society in that sense. But in other senses, um, the governments own all the basic infrastructure, down to the local flour mill, uh, creamery, um, and all the transport that's required on the island. Um, so within the government, I'm the director of transport services, um, and we run about 2,300 vehicles and plants. Um, that's everything for police car, ambulance, um, nurses car, all those are run by the central fleet. Um, and within that, we give logistical support to the government. So when we set up the vaccination program under COVID, I was involved in that, uh, strategic share services. Um, and of course, my favorite bit at the bottom, Isle of Man Transport, um, which consists of two bits. Um, there are about 4.3 million journeys um, a year on transport, public transport. Um, for a population of 85,000, 85, that's not bad going. Uh, about half a million are on the railways, and they're mainly journeys of desire, whereas the, the buses is a mixture of necessity and desire. Because we're an integrated transport system, um, we have a system of smart cards. 63% of our transaction is on smart card, um, uh, which vary from uh, day tickets or, or multi-journey tickets, carnets, um, 24% is contactless, which we call Eurocard, MasterCard and Visa with your credit and check cards. Um, so cash is a very, very small percentage. Lots of places have taken cash away totally, but we leave it there so that anyone that wants an odd journey can still buy one. So it's a modern bus fleet. There's a number of double-deckers in it, um, 24 double-deckers in the fleet, which cater for school buses and moving loads during things like the motorbike festivals, the TT, right down to minibuses that deal with rural services. So the second map of the island here, like here is the capital Douglas, down to the south, um, it's a core bus route every 15 minutes. Um, it's also uh, the steam railway going up this way to Laxey and to Ramsey. Um, is the um, Max Electric Railway. It's about an hour and a quarter on the service tram to Ramsey. Um, it's about 55 minutes on the more direct bus route, and it's six minutes on the motorbike in the TT. Um, the TT to uh, go around the circuit starts in Douglas, it goes out towards Peel, up here, back to Ramsey, then back over the mountain. And um, it's done at an average of 135 miles an hour, and on Solby Strait up at the top here, motor the record is a Kawasaki clocked at 209 in what would normally be a 30 mile an hour zone. Um, so uh, the, yeah, this bit at the top here is where it's very, very rural. And that's actually uh, where we run demand responsive transport. Um, so this is the mountain road with the TT. And it may look a little obscure to you with a couple of old vehicles. And um, the road was closed for maintenance uh, just prior to a TT. Um, so we took the opportunity to play out, which we like to do now and again. Um, the bus on the right is ex Douglas Corporation. It's 1946 um, uh, Region 3. Uh, and we have eight vintage buses in the, fill, in the fleet. 
which are, which we hire out for weddings and for um, filming. But on this occasion, um, we were we were encouraged to put one of our locomotives, number eight, uh, Fenella, on a trailer, and three traction engines took it round the island uh, for filming because it was an opportunity that I to do that on the road in the UK. So they came across and had a wonderful time. So we're drilling down to where you have a little more interest now. Um, we have four railways, as we call them. Um, the, uh, as I've said, the Manx Electric Railway here, which is basically a, um, an American interurban of 1893. The Snaefell Mountain Railway here is, is a tramway of 1895. Down here, Douglas Horse Tramway is 1876. And the Steam Railway is um, uh, 1873. So um, they're not preserved. They've, they've always been there and they've always run. Um, they were originally private sector. The MER was nationalised in 57, uh, Steam Railway in 68, and so on. So here's Caledonia, a very early picture on the Manx Northern Railway, which came into the Steam Railway. That railway uh, closed in um, 1968 um, with a Clemenson coach band, which are interesting, they had three axle coaches. Um, but we can actually set pictures like this up today because the rolling stock's still there. So the oldest steam loco, we're going to do the steam railway first, um, is number one of 1873. It's cosmetically restored and sits in our small museum at Port Erin. Um, this is loco for number four of 1874, a small boiler loco um, in overhaul. Um, it's back out now and running. And you can see we do, we do make advances. So on the front pony truck, um, we've now got roller bearings and things like that, um, but it, you really have to look um, to, to know. And four uh, was back in steam a year ago now, and he sat here at the water tank at Port Erin with a standard coach behind and the station. Um, so standard Bay of Peacocks. One of the problems with them is they're ideal at going in the direction this is currently facing, um, but with no, get no small wheel at the other end, they're very rough riding going the other way. But they have to be that way around because it's a one in 66 hill leaving Douglas and we need the water to stay on top of the firebox. Um, almost all the locos of the 16 survived. There are um, some scrapped and one sectioned in a UK museum. Um, but many haven't run for 50 or, or more years. And number five was in store with asbestos. And we've recently had an asbestos removal programme. Um, because there were still four locos with asbestos, which we've now got rid of. Um, one of the problems is that the locos, um, the three main boiler sizes, obviously small, medium and large, and locos um, 10, 11, 12 and 13 are the better locos for us because they, they date from around 1910 and they're slightly bigger. But what you find is they get to the point where they're actually worn out. And this is... Um, uh, it was withdrawn uh, over nearly 20 years ago. It was worn out, number 11. Um, you can't scrap it. It's, a, it's really a, a, a very prestigious uh, museum exhibit, except we're not a museum. So we've actually paid to have it restored. That's the frame upside down, having all the work having been done to straighten it. Um, we've actually got a new boiler for it, made by the Seven Valley Railway. Um, there it is, put back together. Um, it was delivered to us last week, and there's its first steaming um, for nearly 20 years um, at the workshop last at the end of last week, um, which shows it's when we started the project in 2016. So even um, using professional other railways and professional engineering firms, these are still massive projects. Our basic workshops all date from the periods the railways were built. So if you want to take the pony truck out and you want to do some other work in winter on bearings, this is how we have to jack them up. Um, we, we do modernise things where we can, um, but it's still very much a historic way of doing things. And our apprentices are um, taken on and trained on the uh, railway um, so that we keep the skills alive. Um, Manning is the biggest loco. It's the one on um, uh, steroids, number 16, the last one delivered in the 20s. Um, it got, when it, as soon as it was worn out, they stopped using it and it was parked in the museum. 
but it would actually be a really useful engine. Um, so we are currently working to bring that to life. So here's the frame having been straightened and checked and the first water tank on there. And we hope that that will run uh, in about another year's time, which will help us celebrate Railways 150. We also have one diesel loco for backup, um, which uh, was made in uh, South Carolina. Um, and uh, But we had to have the cabs um, from an American standard size for a three foot gauge railway. The cab is eight inches too low. Um, so we had to have a cab at each end because you wouldn't be able to see over the bonnet. Um, some quite interesting history on the steam railway. The coaches were all originally four wheelers, um, but they used to come off the track. So what they did, they put two four wheel bodies, that's one there, onto a, onto a running frame as a bogey one. Um, and this is actually the original A1 and B1 uh, coaches of 1873, which we've restored. Um, here's F15, which was the next phase of coaches. Um, these are 1890s, um, which is also been restored. And this is A1, B1 coming to a conclusion. Um, so that we, we've tried to do that as restoration as opposed to um, uh, no eye to the past. Um, this is one of um, six coaches uh, built of some of our newest ones in the early 1900s, 1905. And these are the basis of our dining train because they're our only open coaches. So this is in the director's saloon where, of course, I have my personal bar, uh, whereas other coaches now are set out as in twos and four seats. And we carry about 10,000 people a year on the dining train. And most of them tend to be uh, local people. Um, but if a tourist turns up and then says, can I go on the dining train? We say to them, well, you should have booked at least a month ago. Um, and the, all the food is prepared in the kitchen at the end, uh, which in a narrow gauge railway is quite challenging um, because it can serve 88 um, seven course meals on New Year's Eve with no choice. And we regularly serve that number of meals with three and four choice. Um, we've had one new bridge this last year at Balasala where they're going to build a bypass to the village. And of course, all the Manx rumours said the bridge wasn't high enough. And Caledonia, which was the first train I showed you um, um, with the old chaps on it, um, is there steaming when it was the first train that ran under the bridge. Um, so the steam railway, that's at Mary Vega, about halfway. Um, and you can see it works through rolling countryside. You can also see that we've put long railed rail on with the expansion joints and we spent a fortune sorting out the drainage. Uh, moving on, so you've done the steam railway. You'll have to hang on for the Manx Electric. That'll be last. Um, so Mr. and Mrs. Lightfoot came to the island in the early 1870s. It was a very pioneering place. They came to us from Sheffield. Um, they were the promoters of the uh, Douglas Bay Horse Tramway um, Bill, which went uh, received the act in 1876. Um, in the UK, the Queen, of course, is the Queen, whereas here she's Lord of Man because she owns the island. Um, so we still have a similar legal system to the UK, but separate. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lightfoot um, arranged the horse tramway. And here's one at the bottom of what was Burnt Hill. It's now Summer Hill, one of the double-deckers. Um, the double-deckers uh, really fell out of favour because in winter, when it was windy, they needed two horses. And once and particularly efficient um but you can see we've we've managed to get one or two early pitches this again is at strathallon of 27 and of course you'd be surprised to learn here's 27 in body overhaul um uh, making sure that we restored it here's 27 in the operating fleet uh, along with 29 and decor 18. so again the original horse trams are used um, 21 of the original toast racks outside the uh, depot. Um, although the, the depot here were dated from uh, the early 1900s, um, we'll tell you that story later. But if, if you note the facade, it will become important. Um, we're gradually working through the fleet, making sure that they're restored and in good working order. Um, so we're about two thirds of the way through now. That's actually outside the Manx Electric Depot. Um, so the two, the one on the left and the right, we call sunshades. So we have toast racks, sunshades and enclosed cars. Um, so here you are watching a presentation 
about uh, tramway streetcars and so on. And I'm showing you a field um, with some uh, bales of straw and haylage and things. That's because one of my roles is to run the farming operation that produces the horses for the tramway. So I'm a farmer of 179 acres, um, which might not sound a lot if you're sat in the middle of the prairies, but I can assure you when you're, when your real interest is, is in the tramways, it's a bit of a, a large sideline. Um, so in the fleet, we have um, in the stud 30 horses, um, which live in winter in the fields and in summer live in the stables. Um, uh, out on the fields, we have a um, barn, um, and um, we also use it to break the horses in for work. So, um, first of all, they learn to have the collar on here. Um, the collar is actually filled with straw, and they're uh, original, and we have them overhauled and repaired, um, and spread the weight round the front. And um, then the long reins are the reins which the tram driver would hold. Um, and they get used to doing that. We walk them around the fields. We then put a sledge on them on the beach um, before they progress to a tram. We have our own farrier on my staff. Um, and we've recently got an apprentice farrier because the one we have is due to retire. So we have all the horseshoes and all the colours and all the sizes. And the horses, um, the first set of shoes at the beginning of the season last six weeks. Then they're reshoed about every eight weeks. And that's done in a building which, again, is original from the 1870s that is still there for us to use. The horses originally were kept in stalls and uh, we have one section of the stable still with stalls so that people can appreciate the horse basically um, could um, stand there and sleep there at night but couldn't turn around or anything else. Um, they just lock the legs and, and go to sleep. Uh, whereas now the rest of the stables has been converted into loose boxes. So they can turn round and they can lie down and so on. But interestingly, if they hear anybody come in, you can see they're immediately nosy and want to know what's going on. That's because they want to know if you've got their treat. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You've got their treat, which is um, um, carrots, apples, and of course, polo mint. And if you give them low uh, sugar um, polo mints, they spit them out because they can tell the difference. So all their collars are all hung up, ready to go. Some of the uh, horses need blinkers, some of them don't. And during the training, we work out which bits they need and don't need. And um, there's William all dressed for work. Um, he has blinkers. He um, has uh, his collar on. And you can see then behind are the... Are the um, uh, the tracers that go to the tram for the pull, and then uh, the uh, reins which clip onto here are added afterwards. Um, we have our own breeding programme. Um, historically, we did and it had fallen out of fashion, um, but we, we've had six foals in the last four years um, to make sure. Um, a horse can live up to 40-ish, um, and they work. They start to be broken in to work about four um, they'll be in a tram by the time of the five normally. Um, they last to about 20. Um, Mark lasted to 24. Um, and then they uh, retire. I'm not allowed to sell them to the French to eat. They end up at the <coughs> horse's rest home. Um, and um, uh, they um, are then a marvel for others to go and see and pay for. Um, so the horse tram depot you saw. Um, behind the first horse tram shop um, had a first floor added in the 30s and unfortunately they didn't quite line up. It was a wooden shed before, they put some steelwork in, it didn't line up here and it's been unsafe for many, many years so uh, I'm afraid I had it knocked down and we've put a proper new steel frame up but what we yeah. did, you can, hello Sorry to interrupt, uh, we had a question what kind of horses are they? Clydesdale shires and crosses with cobs Wonderful. Thank you. No problem. So the offices that were added in the 30s on the front um, are where we've put at the back. Um, and that's allowed us then, uh, here's inside the new one, we've had to have uh, false looking uh, sets or cobbles or whatever you call them because you called them something differently earlier. Um, and they're fit for maintenance. 
So, and you can see the offices are now at the back, um, which means that now we've got the original facade returned at the front um, and some of the horse trams lined up ready to go. In the active fleet, there are three sunshades, three toast racks, three um, enclosed saloons. Um, then there are four, which we call our historic trams, not that there are any aren't. Um, the newest horse tram we have is 1915. Um, and they're particular, so we have a Starbuck car, we're only one left. Um, we have the double decker you see there. We have the Royal Tram that has served um, 44 for every time there's been a Royal Visitor. Um, and we have had one that wasn't lengthened, 32. Um, they've all got lengthened over the time to carry 40 people. So there it is in all its splendour. The promenade, I'm sure this is a point of interest. The horse tramway uh, uh, was renewed at the track in 1937. Um, when the whole promenade was uh, redone um, and no work and no money was spent on it since. So the promenade had become a bit of a mess. Um, during the Second World War, we had an internment camp here um, and you could see where the uh, fence had been to keep the internees in the guest houses. Um, and therefore we had gone through a scheme to totally rebuild the promenade in, in its entirety. Um, it's been going three, just over three years now, the scheme. Um, we had to stop running the horse trams in the centre of the scheme. Um, and they, uh, we expect the roadway to be finished for the start of this season and the tramway to reopen for two thirds of its length um, down to Broadway. And then the tram corridor is there for the rest and that will be finished in due course. So you can see that in rebuilding the road, we've put proper strength into the road. We've used proper groove rail, and that will allow the Manx Electric Railway to be extended to um, the sea terminal if we ever choose to, um, because that was the proposal in 1896. The first vehicle that went on the new horse tram track was 34, started life on Snaefell as the coal car, ran as a works car then on the MER and uses with the, uh, with the diesel generator so it can go out in an emergency and it's the same gauge so we drove it across the gap um, and we had a drive out and there's me having driven the first tram on the new tramway um, having done that of course here's a swap the other way like station on the Manx Electric and the horse tram number one in town which you'll see why shortly we also had cable cars on the island which um, I went in um, the early 30s one of those is preserved um, 72, and um, that's on Woodburn Road behind town. That's outside the depot on York Road. Um, we also uh, had Steamston cars that ran on the Douglas Bay, um, Douglas Head Tramway, and that didn't reopen after the Second World War. Um, so let's move on to Stafel. It was 125 years old uh, in um, uh, 2020, 1895 when it opened. And we're still running the original cars, albeit some are more rebuilt than others as have gradually fallen apart. And they all have different liveries from different periods. And five is probably a most significant rebuild because that was hit by lightning and burnt out in the early 90s. Um, so in the centenary year, the 150, where are we? In um, 2020, for 125 years, we couldn't operate because of COVID. Um, so we secretly ran a tram up and did a deal with the post office, our post office, and they produced a special sets of stamps. So we all dashed up on tram one. Um, and you can see that we've had a bit of modernization. That's the original Summit Hotel uh, in 1895. Um, it's burnt down several times, presumably when the tramway has been short of money. Um, there's one of the other period buildings. Uh, and when it last burnt down, um, you saw the current building behind it. Um, the uh, summit is often in cloud, even though it's only 2,000 feet, and see the cloud on the mass there. Um, they're particularly significant to, uh, uh, to those of you tonight, most of you across the pond, um, because the original two masts up there were for a radio beam for guiding planes across the Atlantic. Um, and it's a speech circuit now for, uh, radio, for um, air traffic control. Um, but we'd run silly events like I gather you do 
uh, at other museums in America. So we have an island at war and we borrowed this um, model of a Spitfire, which had been used as a prop in a film. And we actually had someone rang up to say that the plane had crashed on the mountain and could we go and see if the pilot was all right? But it was just a prop from a film. Um, and we have like Midsummer's Evening, we have those that are more connected with the gods and the Vikings um, go up there and here they are sending their wishes to the gods. Um, so we had 150 up, I think, that night doing that. But if we do that, we have to issue a notice to airmen um, so that the planes on the way to America in an evening aren't confused by these things. So looking in detail at the tramway, um, this is near the summit. And there's a foul rail on the right because that's the downhill line. Um, whereas in the British Isles, you'd expect the left, it would be left hand running, Snaefell is right hand running. That's because it was built left hand running. And when it um, wore out the foul rail rather than renew the foul rail, they made it right hand running and they remain to, to this day. The foul rail, um, which I'll show you a close up of, is was the originally has two purposes. It's the braking rail and there are wheels, there are wheels that run on it between the trucks um, to stop the trams blowing away. Um, the uh, Fell family came from the Lake District, not that far away. Um, and the uh, first railway they built with the Fell system was Monsonese, um, over from France to Switzerland over the Alps. That didn't last long because they built a tunnel. Um, and there were various other fell rail in uh, South America, in Brazil, and in New Zealand. And on South Island, um, the museum to the fell family is there. Um, um, all that way from both where they lived and where the last working railway is. Um, you'll notice they've got bows on the roof. Um, the low road, the MER had that as well. Hopkins and bows. Um, because the overhead in those days, when it was very primitive, um, they didn't, the ears that held the overhead wire didn't allow you to run through. Um, so the wire had a much um, greater uh, horizontal variation so that under the poles there was nothing touching. So the idea is one bow was he always in touch with the overhead and we're still running the Hopkinson bows on the tramway, on the mountain tramway. Um, the uh, significance you'll notice is there's no windows. Um, the cars were built without windows and they only ran like that during the first year. And they had no clerestory roof, it was a flat roof. So they put a clerestory roof in and put windows in. Um, so it, it took them uh, the first year to uh, look at that. Here's the original uh, power station um, on that. I said I'd show you a close-up of a truck. This is one of the original trucks, which has got a Mather and Platt open cage motor. They were replaced by second-hand equipment from Germany. And this is the fell brake. This here will go up into the driver's cab and he winds to put pressure on here um, to act as a, originally a service brake, but now an emergency brake. There's one of the Arken cars arriving after Arken closed and the uh, electrical and mechanical bits were used to keep the Snaefell cars going. Although the mountain's only 2000 feet, it's constantly a challenge um, to uh, uh, protect from the weather. Um, and we came to work one morning um, in the, since I've been here since 2009, we've had one in 100 year rain and two uh, one in 50 year rains. Um, how you can have th three such rains for uh, one in 50 years in 13 years tells you about climate change. Um, and what we realised was that in any overhaul programme here, we would have to significantly increase the drainage. You can see before that there's just on the left here, um, there's a stream coming down, and obviously it's been totally overwhelmed. Um, where it has uh, washed out here, uh, this is where the original earth cable was, you can see it there. Um, and at one point you could stand in it and disappear, it was over six feet deep. Um, so, and this is obviously here, fairly new track. There it is in its deepest state. This here is fairly new track. And you can see we effectively, um, fairly major write-off. We managed to get a special grant from the government for 1.9 million pounds to fix it. And we opened the railway on time. However, working on the mountain in winter is not something that lots of people like to do. Um, and here's our little ballast truck. So we have to, we have, um, 
and the, uh, we can uh, access by road at the bottom near the farm uh, at the bungalow uh, where the TT course is so only in three places um, and it's a one in 12 ruling grade adhesion worked so that's the maximum ballast we can move at any one time uh, when we're doing rebalancing work and when you're trying to change sleepers and it's like that um, it's not an encouraging place to work when we refurbished the summit hotel uh, inside the hotel when we had to take the windows out it was minus 18 uh, but you could get on a tram with the heaters on and have a warm because it was only minus eight on there and at the summit section of the line um, we do take down the overhead in winter um, because otherwise I think it would fall down uh, some brave soul walked up and took that for me um, in uh, uh, we don't have any bad winters but that was in one particularly bad winter what we've also done is worked out that we need to be able to do work in the summer um, to increase productivity. Um, so here is after the great wash away, we've put the temporary points in there um, so that we could have operate a single line section and get the show on the road. Um, and here's then the work. This is the original power station the building here. Uh, and opposite here was the original chimney. Um, Mariah that you saw is 34 on the prom. It was used to bring coal up here in the uh, winter and stockpile the coal. And you can see part of our drainage system here uh, that we've put in. And also we've put uh, sheet piling and further down here, gabions in, because this is all peat. And you can see it moves. And um, in fact, you can see there on the right where it's moved here. And every now and again, we have to cut it back and dump it over the other side. So it's not totally stable. And the mine to the left of the digger is a, a lead mine. 90% um, of the world's lead came from here or land up now at one point. Um, so that's in that work there. And you can see we're putting cross drains in um, and you, it doesn't look terribly stable, but we check it frequently. We have about one landscape per year. This is at the bungalow where the TT course crosses the mountain road. Um, and um, the, we have to make special plant because this is three foot six gauge, Cape gauge. Um, and with again, with the ruling one in 12 grade, maintaining traction is a bit of a challenge. <coughs> However, you can see this is taken from the summit looking towards the north to Ramsey, point of air and Scotland beyond. Uh, and you can see when we're finished uh, the work uh, and the renewal, and ballast retention on the edge there um, and on a nice day that it's certainly worth keeping um, this is ongoing work here just below the north curve and again you can see more drainage work going in um, and we do the drainage work then we renew, renew the track and you can see the uh, right hand track here which is actually the uh, up track has been done there are two whole 200 poles Drivers are taught to drive by pole number. Um, so you can see that this is uh, pole 1160. There's 904 poles on the low road and pole 1001 to uh, 200 are on the mountain and the drivers have to know where they are by pole number. Um, it's a typical mountain railway. There are days when there are too many people and there are days when not enough, but we sell to groups and you can get some interesting weather situations. Here's uh, number one in overhaul, which shows how basic the frameworks of the trams are because they're so primitive. Um, and that's had to have fairly major renewal. You'll also see inside um, that at some point steel frames have been added because the clerestorial roof was added when they put the windows in. Then there's a steel frame been added just to try and give a little more rigidity. Um, so there's tram one going back together in its overhaul, which is nearly 10 years ago now. And there it is posing with the two aerials that are so important to you when you're flying to see me and the cafe to the right. So you can see how it spirals round the mountain um, on its way down. Um, and that gives you a good view of the one in 12 hill looking. That's on the west side um, with looking towards the point of air. It certainly is a dramatic railway. This is then down the valley below the bungalow. Um, near the Lurgate, and you can see how the retaining walls are put in. And at this point, I'll tell you the whole line was built in seven months. 
OK, so Tram 2. Tram 2 has been recently repainted and had some work done on it. We've also fitted the uh, panic button and that's because we've put track brakes on. The fell rail really is uh, was originally cast steel plate onto the steel rail and uh, it, once it began to wear it wasn't very efficient. They were changed for mild steel plates um, but even so on a bad day it takes some winding. To pass your test you have to stop a fully laden tram in three poles so it's a bit of a muscle man test. So we've put some track, since Arkin had track brakes on, we've put some half tra size traction on. Um, in there is a steel frame and there's a truck that's been overhauled at the side of the depot. Um, because of the one that we're doing at the moment, number six, we're putting a whole steel frame in uh, to give some greater protection but maintain the original image. That's looking down the centre of the island to the south where the mountains are. So the north half of the mountains are in the centre, then in the south of the island, they're on the west coast. Um, Solby Reservoir is our source of drinking water. Um, and there are seven reservoirs on there, and that's the biggest one, and they all feed into there. And Peel is beyond the hills. And then uh, the slight uh, hills you can see top left uh, uh, in the distance of the mountains of Morn in Ireland. So here's our temporary crossover, which is a permanent installation. Um, but we can now move the fail rail position, etc. So if we need to run single track, we can do so uh, at any time. Um, and this is the only flat section between Laxey and the bungalow. So we have crossovers at the bungalow anyway, uh, but that's two thirds of the way up. So we now have one third, two third opportunities. Um, so here again is another one stripped back for painting. That's number four looking at it. Um, and it's just very, very crude construction. And keeping them going is a bit of a challenge. So that's five in paint. So here's the steel frame that you saw all bagged up, um, which has gone in now to be uh, the basis of number six to make sure that if we have uh, an unfortunate accident, we don't really want one. Um, there is a bit more of a safety cage to it. And there you can see the framework going on. So the, all the original um, um, uh, visage is unchanged and you can see the truck in overhaul um, at the moment as well thoroughly refurbished we have to make our own works car so there's an old truck that we converted but whenever we add anything in any weight it has to have a fell break uh, independently so that we keep the ratio right uh, to keep it going and that shows you from the summit looking down on the summit cafe the present building and the tram but you can see that actually to go up on a cloudy day can be good because at times you go above the clouds and, uh, and, and you get this magical cotton wool effect when you look round. Um, we're, running, uh, we're running two minutes behind schedule, I must carry on. Um, so that's a drone view looking back at the summit into the hills in the south. Um, and there's a nice evening shot um, looking down the Laxey Valley. So the tramway you'll see is here. So from the summit, it goes round here, down to the bungalow, and then down there, down to the Lexi Valley. So the tramway is five, is five miles long, double track, uh, up one in 12. So, you know, you've got to keep the tram under control. Um, so there we are, that's end of part one. Um, I just need to do a technical change, which I will do now. While you're switching, we did have a question about uh, who built the horse cars. Were they built uh, on the island or in the UK or did they have different builders? Uh, no, they're practically most of the rolling stock on the island is uh, Milnes um, um, and its various incarnations. And they were based in Birkenhead. Um, the original tramway in the British Isles was in Birkenhead, George Francis Train. Um, and he got prosecuted for blocking up the street. Um, and that led to the Tramways Act 1870 and all the tramways in the British Isles. Um, and uh, therefore the first factory that built horse trams, uh, GF Milnes was in Birkenhead. Um, and they built practically all um, the uh, MER and um, Snaefell trams. They built all the Snaefell trams and uh, most of the horse drums. Thank you. Ready to go. So we're halfway and we're roughly on time. 
So uh, you've done three of the four railways, so now the one that perhaps is of the greatest interest. Um, I think you had a Hollywood sign in 1923 and keep going on about it and showing it on television. Well, our electric railway sign is much older, of course, um, and is somewhat dilapidated there and has been the subject of a restoration project which uh, we completed a few weeks ago. Um, but the significance, there we are, taking it down for overhaul. Nothing's easy these days, is it? Um, but that is shed is in this creek. So this picture is around 1890, 1891, and is the north end of Douglas Promenade. Um, the castle in the picture is Derby Castle, which became an amusement park. The houses immediately above that here are the villas at Strathallan. Um, this is uh, was um, Burnt Hill, which is now Summerhill, and our horse tram stables are that building there uh, today. Um, uh, so you can see how the promenade was developing quite piecemeal, um, and uh, the chance to extend came. So the uh, Derby Castle is to your left now. The building in front of you is the original power station of 1893 and the original car shed and one of the original trailers from 1894 in front of you, so a very early picture. You'll notice that the yard slopes down towards uh, inland uh, because all the creek is infilled and uh, why would you have it flat when you run out of infill? You leave it as it, as it finished. So this is inside that original shed. Um, car three was lost in a fire in 1932 in Lexi and car six is still running today. And that is in the same shed two winters ago when we were overhauling the cladding and the steelwork to make it survive. And we had to decide what winter work we had to do on the trams, put them in the shed and then put the scaffolding in um, to do the roof, which was a challenging winter. So that's the building looking from the other side, the seaside, the land side. And that's the power station of 1893, which is still there and we use as a workshop. Um, and the original depot is to the left. Um, that's the original running shed, the top shed. You'll see where that fits in a minute. That was rebuilt by, with a new shed um, in, 80, in 1996 um, when the building almost collapsed. And so in the site now, um, you can see there's the Hollywood sign, which you'll see later. The top shed's reclad, the original uh, museum shed's there. And the power station behind and that and the, you can see the slope on the yard which makes it very challenging to get trams in and out here of the workshop um which has all survived and there it is now finished the electric railway sign back up and all the cladding done so having a drone effect just to see um derby castle would have been at the bottom right of the pitch here douglas uh, is off to the right you see the climb the uh, tramway climbing the hill the power station the original depot and the current running shed. And what happened here, they dug out the cliff and the tramway was built on the same principle uh, as, uh, or the first one to be built on the princip same principle, subsequently used on Crossrail in London, the Mass Transit Railway Corporation of Hong Kong, where the banks buy the land um, uh, to fund the railway to be built. And when the railway is in, then they, um, uh, sell on the development lands or what they built to make a profit to repay the original loans and the MEI was on that basis. So this road was dug in uh, to the cliff side here um, and uh, that fill went in to build the depot site. Original boiler uh, shop um, and some of the dials and slate panels are still there today. Um, so it was originally all on power stations that the tramway built and the excess power was sold to the, the hotel. Douglas, of course, being an awkward place, said they managed with gas, it was superior. So the first hotel, the Onken Head Hotel, had lights. Round Onken Church, the original light standards are still used for the street lamps um, with our initials on. Um, and there were a power station then at Douglas. Uh, a battery house at, Glax, at Groudle, power station in um, Laxey and in Balaglass and the one halfway up the mountain. They were all closed in the 30s 
and we had mercury out rectifiers installed um and here's one that works on six phase ac coming in um to produce your dc phase going out marvelous thing to see working um but we were still running several of those and um it, they were becoming unreliable losing the vacuum so we um, um that just shows how it works um so when you watch it on youtube you can sit and watch marvelous to see the arcing of when they're running um and they're now replaced by solid states so all a whole um uh power station with an ac panel coming in and two rectifiers uh, but we've done that to maintain reliability in the background and there's the modern distribution board your slate panels um there's derby castle that's one we're building we've built that's open now at belarus of our standard um design that we've come up with uh with the three chambers um so the where the last substation is being done this winter balagori so that's been a 20-year project and is effectively the only third modernization of the electricity so this is taken from derby castle station um the uh, note the wooden hut which we still have the, this is where derby castle amusements became someone on which suddenly burnt down lots of people died um, and then the tram depot is there behind it. Um, and this is very, very early. Um, we think this is the first season because you've only got a single track up the hill here um, and uh, only two motor cars. The trailers haven't come at that point. Um, two of the three motor cars are there. Um, so that must be later. Um, those trailers and motor cars still exist. We can show you those later on. Uh, they've been renumbered but well, interestingly this must be later because originally you can see a steel frame here so there it is delivered that's number 16 with the steel frame then they put lights on them and uh then um they um they put roofs on because of obviously they were getting lots of stuff um off here uh grease and things that were um, causing the ladies to despair so there's one of the trailers. They got renumbered. Uh, they were delivered a trailer, um, I think it was 11 to 16, 11 to 18, um, and uh, now numbered 49 onwards. Um, I think two of these survive, or three of these survive, and that's one that's there, um, ready to go. Now, this is a very, very significant shot. Um, with um, They had a batch of four cars, um, which had no windows, just like the Snae Fell cars had. Um, and these had all gone by 1904. Um, they're on Mills plate frame trucks. Um, and none of those, one survives, became a cattle car and survives in a heavily modified form. But it's the only batch of trams that we haven't got represented today. Um, and uh, two of the four of them are in this picture. We bought it for £25 on the internet from someone whose great grandfather took the picture um, and um, they were clearing out and he, and he wondered if it was a significant picture as we bit his hand off. And the canopy here is the terms of the horse tram. Unfortunately, the canopy, when it became unstable, was uh, demolished. So that's then a, a later view of Derby Castle with the horse tram coming on the left, the wooden hut still there, the horse tram depot to the left, uh, Derby Castle Depot behind the Derby Castle Amusement Centre. Um, this again is in 1893, showing two of the first cars at Groudle, which was the first terminus. It's 11 minutes running time from uh, Douglas over the first headland. And we know that because it's a passing loop here. Um, I've just got to stop one sec, just one sec. A little reminder. local difficulty dealt with. Oh, um, okay, great. I was just going to say uh, uh, a reminder for everyone, we will have a question and answer at the end of this program. Um, so this again is at Groudle, but this is um, subsequently. Um, the uh, tunnel cars uh, were four to nine. Four of them survived after the Laxey fire. Uh, and here's, here's one of them. So this is 1894 at least. And we know that's also true because it's now a crossing and it was a it was a stub terminus before. 
Um, and um, as you saw in that shot, why is my computer not responding? Just a moment. Yeah, I've lost the ability to move my slides on. There we are. Um, so uh, beyond the end there, you saw um, double track going off into the distance. And here we are with the first tram going on to Laxey. Um, Lax is half an hour, uh, seven miles from, um, from uh, Douglas. Um, and uh, they all posed for the first journey. And the problem with my staff is they're quite keen about the job they do, although they're well paid for doing it as well. Um, and uh, so um, that was 1894. So in the appropriate point, uh, they all, the engineers went out on the test run and posed on the same curve during the test run as they rang out uh, with one of the original trailers and motor cars. So this is going down into Laxey. Um, you won't get this view now because one, the valley's developed a little more, and two, um, the, uh, there's lots of trees grown there. Of the original three trams, one, two, and three, three was lost in the Laxey fire, as I said. It's actually the one we've got most photographs of. So Laxey Station here, it's original form. Um, the stage, main station building here is still there. That's a, that was a temporary structure. Um, in Laxey, the first terminus was the other side of the viaduct. While well, they built the viaduct, then came into the station. Now, uh, the Snaefell Mountain stopped further up the road there before that came into the station. So we own half of Laxey still today, and the station building was moved round. Um, this station hotel, that conveniently burnt down in 1919. Um, they also owned several pubs, the Dune Hotel, which burnt down in 1930. Um, so you can tell when they were having a bad year. And this is at Bolgram, which is at the summit of the line, um, and is when the road was, be the tramway was built first on the cliff edge, um, and then the road was put in, and the tramway was restricted while that was done. And there's the scene today. Um, this was when we were on the track renewing the overhead recently. And the cliff is also ever so slightly unstable. So the original tram route was much nearer the edge. That was pulled in and the road added. And there has been one landslip there in the 70s, um, which is just round from this narrow bit. You can see the overhead going back together there. The biggest structure on the MER um, is the viaduct going into uh, Ramsey. So the first terminus in 1897 was to your left, coming from Douglas. Then they built the viaduct and went across then into Ramsey in 1898. Uh, one of the winter saloons, there are four of those that survive today. Now are highest mileage cars, they do up to 18,000 miles a year. So uh, when they were delivered in 1898, presumably by now they're out of warranty and need a bit of maintenance. Um, the structure is unusual. It's two parallel bridges. Um, this is 1.4 million quid, um, but we found that there were too many loose rivets in it, there's 17,000 rivets in it. And here we are finishing off the work. So uh, obviously you've got the walkway at the side, um, then you've got longitudinal timbers, which the tracks are on. And then the safety rail is another timber, so that if they come off, they're limited in where they can fall. Um, and then this is the gap between the two bridges, which we now have some safety fencing on. So the original terminus was up here on the left, and the pit for the original depot is still there. So if you go wandering in this park on the left, you can fall down the pit if you're not careful. So there's the temporary terminus in Ramsey of 1898, which we still use today. Um, overhead renewal, um, the 17 and a half miles of double track to Ramsey, um, it was in very poor state when I came here. We will, we will finish the renewal of the overhead wires this winter and we'll finish painting the poles hopefully next winter. Um, so we have our own team that looks after that, there are four of them, and their preference is to use one of the two uh, toast racks, 1904 toast racks, because they're the most powerful trams that we have. Um, when they're putting the wiring up. Um, we've seen recent years bought our own rail, rail bender, massive investment, it was over 100,000 quid. But it means now within our renewal programmes, it's more efficient to transfer, transport rail to us, because it all has to come by boat. 
Um, and we can also, we don't, you know, if something's just not quite right, we can make adjustments. So it sits in there. Um, we have an aggressive renewal. Uh, with 60 miles of railways, we really need to renew a mile and a half to two miles a year to catch up. Um, uh, uh, which we're doing. That's looking down into Douglas Bay. Um, so you can see how horseshoe it is because um, the, uh, the dock is here at the other end. The distance across the bay is two miles. And the horse tramway around, this is about um, uh, three quarters of a mile up out of Douglas. Um, you can see that we're moving to concrete sleepers. Uh, we're remove, we're move, improving drainage work. We'll just run through some examples of that now. Um, so um, we concrete sleepers are made specially for us in three foot gauge, um, and uh, we use fish plates originally, and still do in one or two key areas. But um, we now thermic weld a lot of the joints and use long rail did rail sections. Um, we in any renewal we go back to formation. So on Gradle Bridge here, uh, we've been sorting out the wharf to proofing while we had the opportunity. We're using Edelong crossings and uh, dropping them in so that uh, the period of tramways closed for crossing renewing is, is reduced. Um, and here's uh, Eskadale having the crossing renewed at the moment. Well, on that scene, that's two years ago. Um, you can see when we've dug out the formation that really, uh, in some places, there was a bit of crude drainage work, but you have all these banks draining into our formation which is slightly lower than the road. Um, so we, you can see we're installing a drainage system um, all the way around to do that. And there's the formation at Eskadale going back together. Uh, and there's catch bits so we can clear the drains. And effectively, we're putting a much more modern standard in. This is at halfway between Douglas and Laxey. and shows how difficult it is in planning our work. So we're using a road lay by here for access um, and we've got a single track operation and the other track then being fed down to be renewed at that point. Um, this is halfway, a third of the way between Lexi and Ramsey. We talked about the highest point at Bulgram, which is where the foam mast is there. Um, so this is then a starting the descent towards Ramsey. And Doom Quarry here was owned by the tramway, one of two quarries, uh, for getting out the stone for ballast work. So we use that site still, again, as a, as a PR dump. And you can see that um, one tram has gone uh, through the single line section and the other one is now crossing over. So where the, the crossovers allow us, we can do work in summer um, to keep the show on the road. So this is going down um, Balashaleg straight going, uh, going down there towards Dune. Uh, village and again we got some awful tracking so you can see in summer we can run the service general services motor and open trailer cross bench car um, uh, we only have three enclosed cars uh, trailers um, and we can get the work then done within uh, and get our renewals on so it includes drainage it includes concrete sleepers it includes long welded rails um, and uh, you can see the difference it looks like when it's done um, this is near Balagori, and again, um, we've had several landslips in this area, which we've now cured because we found that some farmer had altered his drains and we were getting all his water. So what you can see here is that the catch pit there, we put a drain in right through the area uh, and then renewed the track because we found where we've had lots of water logging, the ballast is no longer any use. We've had to renew all the crossovers, which the last one's being done this winter because again, they were very, very worn. Uh, this is a ballast skeg, um, which is two thirds of the way from Lexi to Ramsey. Um, and the uh, work being done there. Um, this is on the straight at the way going into Ramsey. And again, we've, we've done the key work there. Um, old tramways, of course, on any significant date, um, take pictures of the staff and here are the operating crews. Uh, for the 125-year uh, date in 2018, um, and including me there, stood at the front uh, there, um, because um, we normally run six trams, we groups, etc. it's sometimes eight, 
Um, but we need on um, very special days, we run 12 or 14, and that requires everyone who can drive to drive, which I don't mind because it gives me a fun day out. Um, so um, this was a picture with the horse tram in Lexi Station uh, with all the number ones, so horse tram one, MER number one in the Guinness Book of Records of 1893 is the oldest tram on its original tramway and they fell number one of 1895 and one of our preserved buses behind. Um, so Laxey Station on, the, on that day was fairly busy um, and Winterslow in 19 on the basic service with its trailer and the original station building that I pointed out to you earlier. Um, we, we have um, generally three enthusiast periods. We do a uh, rush hour weekend at Easter we do a week at the end of July, Wednesday to Sunday, um, when we do special things for enthusiasts. And we do uh, this last year, we did at the end of October uh, when we ran in the dark for enthusiasts. Um, and so one and two were out there on a parallel run. Um, and um, we do all the strange things just those three weekends a year so we can control it and we can make sure that we do it safely. So car one and two were bending a bit. The banana shape was coming. You'll be familiar with that. Um, so over the last um, two winters, we've taken the roof off and replaced um, all the timber that was causing concern. Um, you can see we've absolutely kept the car as it should be inside. The quarter lights are on the seats on the left. Um, and there it is, replanked and finished. Um, so we do our utmost. Um, you know, if you're in the Guinness Book of Records of having the oldest tram car or street car in the world, still on its original system, you've got to do your best to keep it serviceable, keep it safe, and keep it as originally looking as you can. Um, so there's um, car two being painted on uh, this last winter, car one's being painted now, on our routine cycle of painting trams. Um, and we put on, put it, we paint, we use different fit deliveries from different eras. Um, and we, um, so at this point, it was the Douglas and Laxey Coastal Tramway. So that is an 1895 livery. As you can see here, the, pit, the point of this picture will be lost on you all, but there were tunnel cars were four to nine. Um, and uh, the missing ones were lost in the Laxey fire. So nine is really number nine. Um, Four is actually number one, eight is actually number six and five. So it's, we're depicting for enthusiasts um, two of the cars that were lost. Um, so this is inside. You can see in a, uh, a tunnel car how much narrower they are. They were built with interior face in the seats facing inward, of which six and nine are still like that. Uh, but five and um seven have uh, swing back seats. Um, and you see, we've kept it as pretty well uh, looking as it should. And there it is out of overhaul on a very early trip with matching trailer 48. And we think that's the uh, Milne's dealer stock livery. Um, nine is that we use as an illuminated tram. And here's an event for Christmas, uh, where a little shed at Dune Crossing, where the Dune Hotel was, and had uh, Father Christmas there. And uh, we provided tram service to get people to and from. Very significant picture. 14 was the first uh, toast rack delivered. Um, a handbrake car that fell out of use uh, as tourism declined in the 70s. We think it last ran in passenger service by 1972. And we decided we would restore that for the 125th in 2018. It was recovered from uh, where it was in store in Ramsey and uh, brought back to Douglas. You'll notice it's on plate frame trucks, very primitive. Um, the enthusiast amongst us, um, we say it was all painted the interior and the enthusiast uh, amongst us um, said, well, we could actually rub all the paint off and we could take it back to its original uh, two-tone wooden finish and varnish it. And uh, I said, well, do you think we can still finish it by 2018? The answer was yes. And I said, halfway through the job, are you going to get a board? And no. 
Um, and off they went to do that, um, which means it is a proper restoration job. And Natalie in the picture there was a trainee in those days working on it. Uh, but she's now the uh, one of the fleet managers for the government fleet who works for me. So just about everybody was roped into doing our. Um, it's something we could never afford it to do. And because a lot of them were in the 20s, the varnishing was just painted over. So here it is with the body pretty well complete. Uh, Milne's S1, 2 and 3, these are S3 um, plate frame trucks were, were um, clearly unsprung weight and things were an issue. But that's the, we had none running. We've got lots running under trailers, but none running on a motor. Um, so we said, let's have a go at restoring the set. <coughs> so here they are stripping it down. Um, the only braking system, our trams predate uh, electric rear static braking. We, we're generally using K11 and K12 controllers, which were designed for four motor cars. Some of them were delivered with K10 controllers and frigged. We got rid of all those, um, but straight, and then just a straight, no mechanical assistance. So my Bolton tram has peacock brakes in. So we copied that design and the tram now has peacock assisted handbrake with mechanical assistance and that has made it good to stop. Or I have a I question, so, um, are the steel roof supports original? Yes. Thanks. Body's absolutely original. The framing on the body, there, all that's original, all we've done is take the paint off. Um, controllers, we strip down every winter. Because we're using K11, K12, the arc shield's poor, the, the, generally. For the mileage we're putting on them, if you get any novice driver, you certainly get some arcing. Um, and uh, so we've had to develop a supplier of spare fingers and things like that. I think uh, as, as time goes on, people will find uh, as cars in preservation are used more, there's challenging for spare parts. And somehow we've got to have a better club around the world of getting these parts made. So um, we now have a license uh, from Alstom uh, to make the original uh, canopy switches and circuit breakers because we're just so, ours are in such poor state. We've got fingers made, we've had couplings made. Um, because you just can't go on with the original parts. Um, and as you can see, they're fairly primitive. But we overhaul and uh, check the insulation every winter of every tram. And you can see we take it back to every first stage. Um, ours are so primitive that the knife switches that you see here, um, those, that's, those are the motor cutout switches. Um, they're not on the outside with a controller key. They're, if the driver needs to cut two motors out, it's get your gloves on, get the trolley down and get your fingers inside. So not ideal in our current world. Um, so there's 14 on its first test run. Uh, the engineers again one demanded a photograph for history. Um, therefore, I'm there with it. Um, and uh, we discovered that it had got turned round in the process. Um, so they planned this great plan to winch it on a lorry, drive the lorry round the block and then drop the tram down the other way. So it's the right way around. Um, so I said, don't be stupid. And I said, I'll um, just set the temporary track off and I'll drive it up on the lorry and that'll save you half a day. So they insist on taking a picture just in case I got it all wrong. And what we did then on the first passenger run, everybody who'd put volunteer hours in um, went on as well as... Uh, um, beyond the paid hours, all the volunteers, then we uh, got them to come along, took a picture and gave them a certificate to thank them. So some of the people are in overalls because they are full-time engineering staff who gave extra hours to get the tram back um, to its original condition. You can see when you look at the quarter lights how easy it would have been to paint over them in the 20s. You also see how primitive the trolley bases are. We're on short sticks with... Uh, and there's 14 out with sister car 16. Those are the only two of the batch that run um, out uh, on an enthusiast special. And there it is on a UDA. We do ultimate driving experiences. Um, and the senior drivers and myself, depending on how many we need on what day and who's available, then go out and give people the opportunity um, to, um, to drive on our system. Um, three levels of it, depending on um, 
on how competent you are, or no, how, how we assess how competent you are. Um, and that's on the section going into Ramsey, Ramsey in the background to your left. So we'll look talk about the backbone of the fleet for doing the mileage over years has been the four winter saloons, 19, 20, 21 and 22. Um, about 15 to 18,000 miles a year they do. Um, until 20 years ago, there was winter service. Um, and there isn't these days. We just can't keep up with the maintenance if we do that. Um, you can see how primitive it all is. And with three foot gauge, how tight it all is. Um, and uh, we just have to look, we absolutely have to keep on top of these cars uh, to keep them in good condition. Uh, so there's 20, again, out with the trailer going down Bulgrim towards Laxey. 21 is in the livery from 1957. Um, when the tramway was nationalised, they painted in this nationalised livery, which didn't last very long. So you can see that's in for a winter trucks out. Horse tram being restored to your right. Um, 22, having its trucks out, the body on that is generally a uh, copy because it caught fire in the mid 90s and is very much a replica to the original drawings. Slightly heavier than the other three. Um, but again, that's in for truck overhaul. And you can see um, when we call them in, that they're in fairly, uh, you can see they've done the mileage. Um, and we take it right back to the base like any enthusiast preservation society would. Um, these are Brill 29 trucks. Uh, compressors, we found these days compressors cost an awful lot to overhaul. Our newest compressors, came from Sheffield in 1960 off the 1953 Roberts cars who were bought second hand. Um, and these things are just harder and harder to get overhauled. So these days we go around to machine map. We, we've made sure that a tram, each representative tram has its original compressor or compressor that was on it. But for the heavy mileage trams, we use a modern compressor. Um, motor overhauls, we have a couple of qualified motor winders We've stopped training people to do that, so we now send them out to be done. But that doesn't stop us trimming up uh, as they are doing in the winter overhaul there. And we can still do, uh, we still do basic maintenance work on them. And then the team puts it all back together down the pit and crane the bits in. Um, we've uh, put new uh, spur wheels in um, and we have those hardened and the drive off the motor opinion there we have a sacrificial and um, that's because the uh, there are 3200 pounds uh, to have a new uh, spur wheel whereas the pinion is uh, only a few hundred pounds um so that's going back together you can see that we obviously with the age of the trucks we have to be able to overhaul the hornways um all those details we've come up with ways to keep them going um and to keep them uh uh, as strong as we can um, and you can see that where we can get away with a roller bearing we do so um, but the truck and the axle boxes look just the same as they should um, so there's a set of overall trucks ready to go back under 22 um, we sometimes use letter sign but we have one or two people who have skills like making signs for pubs. Um, and again, here, we, uh, we, we pay them good money, I suppose, but we go back to the original one. So 19 is here in uh, the livery for the opening of the line to Ramsey in 1898 currently. Um, and you see a lot of decorative work that needs to be done. You've already seen 21 there, it's outside the depot in uh, that awful nationalised livery. They did that because 21 is my favourite truck drive, so they painted in the worst livery. Put me off. The engineers obviously then insisted yet another shot of them. They're always sat down doing nothing, aren't they? I must mention it. Um, the ratchet cars that um, here, 29, what were they, 28 to 31, there isn't one of those running. So our next long-term project is to bring 29 back from the dead. The four cars are in pretty good condition. And here it is being brought out of long-term store. And it's probably two years off running, but we keep it as a spare job um, to uh, keep us occupied some days. 
when we need something of interest. Um, but the cars are in generally in reasonable condition. All that's been stripped off them is anything that's usable or wearable. So all the electrical equipment's gone, um, as you can see uh, from that picture. And effectively, we're down to remanufacturing. Uh, there it was at, uh, last summer when we've started to, uh, we're, we're going to leave it painted. We can't face 2,000 hours of taking the paint off. Um, but it'll give us another open tram. Um, basically, as tourism fell off, all the toast racks were parked up and left derelict. Um, and the um, all the mileage went on the winter saloons, towing trailers, as seen as a better way of doing things. Um, 32 and 33 are our newest cars. Um, and they're uh, umbrella trucks, looking at them, yes. Um, and they've got GE motors, uh, which are 27 and a half horse each. So that's our most powerful trams. Um, there's 34 on the prom, the works camera, IS7 from the Snaefell, and shows you the work on the promenade track uh, continuing apace. And um, we've been using that to test them. No lifeguards, no indicators. Well, hopefully everyone else was looking the other way. Um, what we've done, um, we have many trailers that hadn't run for many years. Um, and we decided that with the trailers, we get as many as we can back into um, good condition so we could rotate the mileage and keep things of interest running. So this was trailer 19 when we uh, rubbed it down. And um, this is all being done by enthusiasts. Um, and um, they are at the point now where we are within three trailers of having every trailer that survives serviceable. There's 37, one that the volunteers have done. Looks really good. So we do the mechanical work, uh, wheels and brakes and things, and they do the entire body job. Um, 42, the 40s trailers, again, are the most robust trailers. Um, and um, that's in for overhaul. Came out of overhaul to match 19. So we have a period one uh, to match that. Um, this is uh, this is one of the original 1894 trailers again, um, which they've all got different types of roofs on them. Um, but you can tell the original ones that were delivered as open trailers because they only have every other post to the roof. Um, and we've left it like that. And they've, they've, uh, this is in Laxey Depot. And there it is in service. So the enthusiasts are really making a contribution, uh, allowing us then to um, rotate mileage. This is the director's saloon, 59. Um, it, no bar in this one, I'm less keen on it. Um, it um, uh, was delivered as a four wheeler, didn't go around corners, built by Mills again. Um, and uh, so it ended up under plate flame trucks, um, ex motor car plate frame trucks. Um, and it kept derailing and did for about 50 years. With modern technology, we got the axles weighed. We discovered the springs weren't appropriate for the short wheelbase. And the spring, the National Institute for Springing is in Sheffield. They did the calculations, got new springs, and it's run successfully ever since. Because if you're going to have, um, a museum and we're on the we're on the homeward stretch and we're not too far out for time now um the uh, stations are important the government like i provide transport services across the government the uh, properties look after all government properties and trying to persuade someone uh, to overhaul a tin shed for you um, it's quite challenging when they're into modern buildings uh, but we've done that here this is at dreams carry um, Baldrine, that's how the shelter looked and was getting a bit run down. Um, fortunately, our neighbour passed away and in his legacy he left the money for us um, to start to overhaul the shelter. And that was, just, that was just before we started. And you'll see lots of the shelters have post boxes next to them because um, until the motor vehicle became trendy, the tram conductors were postmen and once a day emptied all the post boxes down the line. So we're coming to the end, that's approaching Douglas, going back into town, last journey at night as the sun sets. Um, and um, there's the ele new electric railway sign up and running. I'm not sure the T and the R are quite the right space, but at least we've got it running. Um, and there's my Bolton tram running at Blackpool. We had a tour on it in October. 
um, which is probably really one of the starts of, of my interest um, in uh, tramways. And the 1901 car is in 1930 condition and really was a pioneer um, to get museum cars to run on modern systems, which it successfully has done for 41 years. And that's it. Wakey, wakey. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, one of the last comments that just came in was really interesting. When are we doing a fan trip? <laughs> um, so before we do get into the questions, uh, I did want to let everybody know who might be new here that we do these regularly. And uh, the next one will be February 9th. It'll be uh, a streetcar survival story about a SEPTA PCC at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum. And in, uh, just one week later, we'll do a Shaker Heights Rapid Transit PCC era presentation as well. Um, so stay tuned to patrolley.org for more, which I am pull it, putting in the chat right now. So you can click on it and check out what's coming up. And uh, save the date because the museum reopens to the public on April 1st, 2022, which is a Friday. And of interest to this crowd will be the Western Pennsylvania Trolley Meet, West Penn Trolley Meet, June 3rd and 4th, which is a Friday and a Saturday this year. Um, it'll correspond with our Anything on Wheels event, which will be the Saturday and Sunday. Um, and uh, before anybody leaves, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, thanks for joining us. And especially if you made a donation today, um, and it's not too late to make a donation, you can go to patrolley.org support and support us in other ways too, like uh, becoming a volunteer or becoming a member. Um, so thank you, thank you very, very much.